Hey, what's going on? It's Jiffy, and welcome to This Is Interesting, a podcast where we tell you what we think is interesting in the world of entertainment, news, video games, and, well, you name it. In today's episode, Jiffy explodes on scalpers, we play a guessing game, and Jay may or may not quit the podcast forever. But before we get to that part of the podcast, Jay, what's going on? What's up? (laughs) That's all I got. That's the best start I think we've ever had. (laughs) All right. Well, with that being said, let's not waste any time. Jay, what's interesting? (laughs) All right. I think the news week was kind of slow this week, so I don't really... I just got two goofy things. Yeah, same. So, the first one, um, this article I came across is this uh, woman who was hit with a felony charge. <clears throat> she lived She lived in Oklahoma, and she moved to Texas, and she went to change her driver's license and found out she had a warrant out for her arrest in Oklahoma. So she has to contact the uh, district attorney's office in Oklahoma and finds out that there was a warrant out for her arrest because she didn't return a movie from a VHS from 20 years ago. It was Sabrina the Teenage Witch VHS. (laughs) Please tell me she didn't return it to like a blockbuster or something. No. What was it called? I, I meant to write this down and I forgot. Oh, that's all right. Um, Um, so I forget what it was called. It was, it was some like, some basic BS generic thing. thing wow so uh a felony charge i mean because let's be honest um we all stole something from blockbuster before they closed <laughs> or yeah. or even while they were open you know you just you just stop returning something like i have to have something from blockbuster that's like um you know that that should have been returned but like n- i never took back i don't know what but <laughs> like have to yeah i'm sure i have something too um for those who don't know what a blockbuster is because you know i'm sure there's a lot of younger you know kids out there listening to this so uh a blockbuster was a place where where you know me and jay back in the day we used to go to to basically rent movies from a store so instead of doing it from a place called um the heck was that uh red box you instead of going to a red box which i guess are also now non-existent or maybe they're still existing but with streaming platforms they're, they're still around but they're definitely not as popular as they used to no, be no because you can get whatever you want on on hbo max or netflix or hulu or disney plus but so blockbuster was a place it was kind of like a library but for like videos did blockbuster have music could you rent music i don't remember there being music um because I know they Remember had video- videos, video games, video games. Because I used to, I used to take the the, I used to take the the videos and the video games, and me and my brother would uh, copy them, all legally, of course. And and <laughs> so we had amassed a ridiculous collection of 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 like videos and video games that you were allowed to copy. Because obviously, you can't copy a N sixty four cartridge. That would be a little no. difficult. Um, but. That's wild. <laughs> so. Dude, you know what I miss the most about Blockbuster? What's up? Their pre-owned games were actually a good deal, unlike GameStop. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because that's great. Because like, you go to GameStop and get a pre-owned game, and it's like $55. Oh, you get $5 off. Yeah. yeah $5 bucks <laughs> off. Like, it's and ridiculous. It's, and it's got a hard scratch on the back that they don't tell you about until it's too late and then you try and return it and they're like oh we can give you uh five dollars for that (laughs) Yep. no No wonder the company is running into the ground oh man they're such a terribly run organization it's so bad um yeah well uh what else you got jay uh the next thing i got is back in i don't even know what year it was 2007 i think it was there was a gold-plated Nintendo Wii made for Queen Elizabeth. Oh. Uh, wow. So it was sent to her, but it was made by uh, THQ. Do you remember THQ? I do remember THQ. Jesus, man, this is the Way Back Machine episode edition. Right? Holy shit. <laughs> so it was a console. It was made by THQ, and uh, it was sent to the Queen, but her staff rejected it, and it was returned to the company. <laughs> So it was thought to have disappeared 
but it uh, reemerged in 2019. It was bought by a private buyer in 2017, oh. and it is now going for sale on eBay for 300 grand. Oh man, dude, um, that's 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 oh man, that's insane. Um, I don't really have anything yeah. on that besides being that's just ridiculously insane. Like, I mean, gold is it, that's legit, but. Three grand, three hundred k, huh? Um, yep. That's an that he's gotten some five digit offers, but he hasn't gotten he hasn't gotten anything above that yet. N- <clears throat> none of the none of the six digits, huh? I mean, nope, well, not yet. Uh, I if, mean, it's in good condition. It's it looks nice. I'll have to check some. It's not my cup of tea, but no, no, no. <laughs> you said this is a Wii, just a regular Wii. Yeah, it was a Nintendo Wii. Huh. Yep, just a regular Wii. I have two Nintendo Wiis that still work. <laughs> it's not that yeah. not that not that that matters but <laughs> <laughs> oh man speaking of things that cost you uh you opened me up for a great segue so i'm just going to go right into it i was actually going to make a pause uh at some point but i decided that your segue is perfect so you know what i'm going to tell you what i think is interesting so last week me and jay we had a conversation about uh the 3D all stars Nintendo game that is off the market and you know you could go on eBay and you can buy it for outrageous prices and he found a price that was for 45k and I thought to myself is any video game worth 45k and so I started to do some digging Jay and uh, you'll never know guess what I found you'll never guess what I found what did you found so what did you found found <laughs> I found <laughs> and that was great the way you said that too oh uh, uh, Comedic timing, keep it in. I found the 40 rarest video games of all time and how much they're worth. So I'm going to go through all 40 games. All right, so just, just wake me up when it's tat. over. And I don't have the energy for this. Yeah, you, you, can, <laughs> you can spit out any comment you want about this. Let me know if you want to stop on a game and talk about it. I, I don't think we should spend too much time on any of these games. But we could spend a couple of seconds on each one. So here we go. Number 40 is SD Gundam Dimension Wars, 1995, going for $950. Huh. It's it's on the Virtual Boy console. Wow. Number, yes, <laughs> yeah, this is where we wow. start. It goes up from here. Number 39, Ginja Fuki Densetsu Sapphire, 1995 for 970. Yeah, say that one five That's times fast. That's the PC <laughs> engine. I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> oh my god, this is great for the PS4. Poop Slinger. <laughs> what? I need to look that up right now. What is it called again? The game is <laughs> the game is called Poop Slinger. Yes. <laughs> it's going for a thousand forty-eight dollars. Oh my god! I need to see some screenshots. The of rarest this. title for the. Oh my god! I'm looking at the <laughs> the rarest title. The, the 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 game right now. <laughs> the the cover is this blocky looking poo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the rarest title for the PlayStation 4 is called Poop Slinger. The gameplay is exactly what it sounds like, so we won't go much further than that. Copies of this game is sold for up to $1,048. The game was developed by a one-man company called Limited Rare. The idea behind limited run titles is to sell as many copies as possible in one day. These titles are usually sought after by collectors. 84 copies were sold. <laughs> uh, limited Rare was bankrupt wow. <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> All right, continuing on. We got a lot more of these. 37, Shinri Jusatushi. No, wait, I messed that up. Jusatsushi Taramaru, 1997 for $1,250. That's a Sega Saturn. Who? Sega. <laughs> I love these names, Number by 36. The way. Yeah, this is, th- I, this is bad. Number 36, Luciana's. Quest, 1995, $1,250. Uh, the console is the 3DO. What is that? I don't know. Remember all those hours spent as a child playing 3DO? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably not. This was a short-lived console with limited titles, the most sought after of which is the North American release of Luciana's oh. Quest, developed by Micro Cabin. 
It's an RPG. Oh, this 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 console was made by Panasonic. Oh, jeez. Damn. What the hell? I had no idea. All right, here we. All right, anyway. Here we go. Number thirty-five. NBA Elite Eleven, two thousand ten, for fifteen hundred dollars. It's a PlayStation Three game. It has um Kevin Durant, a young Kevin Durant on the front cover. NBA Elite. I've never heard of that. Uh, no, me either. It was it was one the first and only NBA Live game to feature the name NBA Elite. All right, so uh, yeah, EA scrapped the project. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Number 34, Amazing Tater. 1991 for the Game Boy. $1,688. The Amazing Tater. Are you looking all these up? <laughs> <laughs> the interesting ones cuz I'm I'm just curious of what this cover looks like. It, uh it's it, it, it looks exactly it, like what you like, think. It looks like uh it looks kind of <laughs> like Pac-Man. Dude, there's a bunch of different vegetables. Yes. We got a potato and a tomato and a pepper and an eggplant and a carrot. I love this game. You might buy it. I made sixteen hundred bucks, bro. It could be yours. I might, yeah. I might have to emulate that. Number thirty three. <laughs> Number thirty three. Uncharted two, Among Thieves Fortune Hunter Edition, two thousand nine for the PlayStation three, going for nineteen hundred seventy three dollars. Damn. That's just a limited edition game. Are you kidding? It's almost two grand huh. for for a game yeah. that I own, but I don't own the limited edition. Damn, I could have been rich. <clears throat> Number 32, yeah. Panzer Dragoon Saga, 1998. Sega Saturn, $2,000. God, you know what? I think <laughs> any Sega Saturn game is going to be worth a fortune since it's a irrelevant, dead-like console. And Sega, we all know Sega and how Sega has Sonic and that's it. And I mean they kinda ha they yeah. kinda have Sonic, but Nintendo kinda has Sonic, but Sega kinda has Sonic, but it's Sega's weird. Uh number thirty one, Shantae, two thousand two for the Game Boy Color. Going for two thousand one hundred dollars. You should look that up. By Capcom. How do you spell it? Uh, S H A N T A E is a platformer for the Game Boy Color created by husband and wife duo Aaron and Matt Bozen. The two struggled for years to get Shantae off the ground. It wasn't until 2002 that it finally oh, that looks found a home on the Game Boy Color. Uh, according to Kotaku, there's 25,000 copies, and they're going for about 2,100 apiece. <laughs> <laughs> Number 30, Earthbound, 1994. The SNES, only released in Japan. $2,127. All right, we're in the top 30, baby. Number 29, Harvest Moon. Oh, my God. Have you ever played Harvest Moon? It's actually quite... F A little bit here and there, but I've never really been into it. Actually quite fun. I have to look because I might have a copy of Harvest Moon. If I do, it's worth two thousand one hundred ninety nine dollars. I have which system? SNES. That is. I never had an SNES. That is interesting. I believe it was the first system I had before the N sixty four at my parents' house. Number twenty eight, Elemental Gear Bolt Assassin's Case Edition, nineteen ninety seven, two thousand two hundred four dollars for the PlayStation. I, this setup looks good. It like came with a one of those like uh, guns. That like you would see at an arcade, mm -hmm. and it actually looks very familiar. Like I may have played it before. Now, oh, well, number twenty-seven, Mega Man Five, nineteen ninety-four, two thousand five hundred dollars for the Game Boy. Why is that? Hmm, that's that's crazy. Number twenty-six, Dead. Wait, which one is it? Mega Man Five. Mega Man Five. Yeah. I have one of them. I don't know which one it is. Uh, if it's five, you got two thousand five hundred dollars. Number 26, Dead Space Ultra Limited Edition. Uh, 2008, $2,500 for the Xbox 360. You need the Ultimate Edition. Rule of Rose, wow. 2006. Oh, this is number 25. $3,000 for the PlayStation 2. Rule of Rose, uh, it's a survival horror game. Oh, $3,000. Number 24, Pepsi Invaders, 1983. Oh, my God. 
Pepsi Invader. Yeah. What? Dude, it has Coke on the top. Oh, this is Atari. It has a Coke on the top. It Coke wins on the top. Pepsi. <laughs> and Pepsi are like the the um battle is that game. Pepsi is like the um uh the um I can't remember the game. It's like Galaga. It's kind of like Galaga in a sense, where like Pepsi would be like oh, the invaders, okay. and Coke is on the top. I see. Pepsi it. invaders <laughs> goes is selling for three thousand five hundred dollars. That was the Atari twenty six hundred. Number twenty three, Spuds Adventure, nineteen ninety one for the Game Boy. Oh, you want to look that up, Spuds Adventure? <laughs> I'm looking that one up. <laughs> it's exactly what you want it to be. <laughs> Three. It is. It is exactly. <laughs> yep. Emulate that, dude. It's like <laughs> there's a. T- <laughs> this is like this is definitely related to that other one. Yeah. In the list. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hold on, I can scroll up because that was like the second item or something. Uh, no, it wasn't the second. Yeah. Item. What was it? What was that one called? I forgot. Uh, Amazing Tater. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely directly really It's the same characters. I lost track of where I was. Okay. That's funny. Spuds Adventure for the Game Boy. Three thousand five hundred dollars. Here we go. For the N64, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut, 1998, for $4,000. Uh, is an update. Wow, f- I never heard of that. Uh, yeah, no, keep it moving. 21, Wrecking Crew, 1985, $4,060 for the uh, NES oh. system. Now we're going way back, 1985, woof. Number 20, Batman Forever Limited Edition PAL, 1995, 4202 for the PAL SNES. All right, number 19. Ex- Wait. Exter- Exertainment? Ex- Exertainment Mountain Bike Rally and Speed Racer, 1995. $4,800 for the SNES slash Life Fitness Exertainment System? What the hell's the Exertainment System? Hmm. I have no idea. It's hard to say. <laughs> number 18. <laughs> Exertainment system. system. I, life. It, it auto corrects to entertainment system. Right, whatever. <laughs> Keep it rolling. Number 18. Whatever. DuckTales Remastered Press Kit 2013. $5,100. Say DuckTales? I said DuckTales. <laughs> it's, yes. It's exactly. Damn. <laughs> yep. There's a remaster apparently going for five grand. Number 17. King of Fighters 2000. English version. English version. Jesus. <laughs> English. $5,750. <laughs> Dang. For Damn, the we're ne- getting up there for the, for the Neo Geo. Oh, man, I haven't heard that bad boy in a long time. Wow, me either. Holy crap. Oh, this is a good one. Number 16, The Flintstones, The Surprise at Dinosaur Peak, 1994. <laughs> $6,624 for the NN. The NN? The NES. This is a lot of reading. Number 15. That titled sounds like a good time, <laughs> yeah. by the way. <laughs> Number 15. Su- I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Number 15, Super Copa, 1993, $6,900. It's basically a uh, SNES soccer game. It's a Spanish-Portuguese version of another game called Tony Miola's Sidekicks Soccer. It's going for seven grand. Number 14, Atlantis 2, 1983, $6,982 by the Atari 2600. Number 13, Little Samson, 1992, $8,738. Oh, now we're getting into the big boys. That's the NES. Oh, here we go. This is your this is your wheelhouse, bro. Number 12, Super <laughs> Mario Bros. 2, 1986, Asian version, $10,000. Wow. It was it was created for a Hong Kong audience where most residents speak both English and Cantonese. These cartridges were not very common, but they do appear from time to time in various auctions. Ten grand. So that means it probably has the English language in it, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's huh. it's the exact game. It's just probably you know how local localization works, right? In some areas, like you can play yeah. certain things in in you know America, but over in China, they're like, no, 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 we can't have any of that. So you have to have different versions and stuff. Number number eleven, Red Sea Crossing, nineteen eighty three, ten thousand four hundred dollars for the Atari twenty six hundred. I feel like Atari twenty six hundred would be if you have any games from that. They're probably worth something. Ten. Probably. Blockbuster World Championships 2. 
1995, $10,500 for the Mega Drive. Uh, okay. <laughs> what the hell's the Mega Drive? <laughs> keep it Wait, keep it rolling. That sounds familiar. Number nine. Nintendo Power Fest, 1994. Right. $15,600 for the SNES. Oof. Number eight. Oh, we're getting into the big stuff. Kazuna's Encounter, 1996, $12,500 for the Neo Geo. Number seven, Tetris, 1984, $16,000 for the Mega Drive. Wow. By the way, Mega Drive is like an add-on to the Sega Genesis. I think it takes I think it takes CDs, but oh, I'm not okay. sure. Just looking real quick. Yeah. All right. That's dope. Num- I didn't get that. Oh, my God, Siri. Every episode. <laughs> The third host has said hello. Okay. Hello, Siri. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> Number six, Nintendo <laughs> Campus Challenge, 1992, $20,100. Uh, SNES. Number five. Oh, here is your wheelhouse again, bro. Super Mario Bros, <laughs> 1983, boxed, $30,100. If you have a Dude, NES, that's like twice as much as I paid for my car. <laughs> if you, <laughs> it's almost as much as I paid for Tori's car. If you have an NES and you have a boxed Super Mario's, bro, you you have you have thirty grand in your pocket. Number four, Air Raid, nineteen eighty two, thirty three thousand four hundred thirty three dollars for the Atari twenty six hundred. Oh my God! Here we go. Top three. Oh. That's the right, that's let's go. that's depression. G- number three, Gamma Attack, nineteen eighty three for the Atari twenty six hundred. So the price that it has here is question mark question mark question mark. So I'll just read the caption. This game is so rare, no one knows how much it's even worth. Only one copy is known to exist, and it's owned by Anthony DiNardo, who listed this super rare Atari twenty six hundred game on eBay for five hundred thousand dollars in two thousand eight. Despite the game being literally one of a kind, there were no bidders. Um, well, that's depression. Huh. All right, so okay. so it's there. It's just no price. So we'll put it at like the $38,000 range because the next game is even higher than that. Number two, All right. Stadium Events by Bandai, 1986, $41,300. Oh, this was, like, this was like before Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, dude. Only 2,000 copies of stadium events were ever produced. Of those 2,000 copies, only 200 made it to store shelves. Even then, it was exclusively sold at Woolworths in northeastern United States. The game was recalled. Wow, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah, for real. That's that's, that's way back machine. The game was recalled and released under a new title, World Class Track Meet. Only 11 copies of stadium events have ever been confirmed. A copy made headlines when it sold for $41,000 in 2017. <laughs> oh, my God. And the number one <laughs> game, I, I haven't looked yet, so I don't know. Like, that, that's for the NES, so it has to be from an older system. Um, we're in the $41,000 range, so the question was, if we take it back, because I've been talking about this for, what, 10 minutes now, probably? You know, giving you guys the list that nobody wants to hear. But what I can tell you is I started this conversation by saying, is there a game worth $45,000? And the number two game of all time being sold was $41,000. I am $4,000 off that mark. So we might have an answer to that question. I have no clue what it's going to be. So I'm just going to scroll down and we are going to see. Number one. Okay, it's a Nintendo. Oh, I know, oh, I know this. 1990 Nintendo World Championships Gold. 1990. I said 1990 twice. Do you want to guess how much yes. this went, this sold for? Oh, all right. Um, all right, so the last one was like 41. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming we, we, we're surpassing this 45 Oh, 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 oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go with 100K. Ding, ding, ding. This man Not is really? correct. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, Nintendo held a competition in 1990 in search of the greatest NES player, sending a team across the United States to compete using a special championship cartridge. The cartridge contained a single level from each of several games used in competition, as well as a set physical dip switches, DIP, to toggle between them. The Nintendo World Championships event shared its name with the gray cartridges used to compete in the event, as well as the gold cartridges given as prizes to the winners. There were originally over 1,000 cartridges used throughout the competition. Winners were given commemorative cartridges, while the majority of the remainder were repurposed for the upcoming Campus Challenge event. Fun fact, the 1989 movie The Wizard which was basically a giant Nintendo commercial, was the inspiration for the Nintendo World Championship, blah, 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 blah. Only 90 gray and 26 gold carts are confirmed to exist. In 2014, one of the gold cartridges sold at auction for 100K. The buyer insists the bid was a mistake, but who wouldn't want the opportunity, blah, 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 blah. Buyer says it was a mistake. Nah. Nah. Uh, nah, it wasn't a mistake. Nope. 100K for a game? All right, so that, you know what? That answered the question, is a video game worth 100K? And the answer to that question is, yep. If you have any of these games on this list, uh, I mean, I guess if you have any games in the top 10, you rich. <laughs> right? You rich, boy. I don't have any uh, of them, so, uh, oh well. I might have one. Good thing, because I might be able to buy a Tesla then, so. Well, that was interesting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We are back and Jay is here with the did you know. Now Jay, I'm not hyping you, but you have you have exceeded expectation three straight weeks. Can we make it a four? What is your did you know? All right. Are you ready for this one? I think it's another good one. <clears throat> so, have you ever heard of the coffee Kopi Luwak? No, I don't think so. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, me no. either. But did you know Kopi Luwak is a coffee that consists of partially digested coffee beans which have been eaten and shit out by an animal called an Asian palm civet. I looked it up and it kind of looks like it kind of looks like uh, a cross between a cat and like a possum. Can I ask you a question? So you're telling so, me this animal eats coffee, poops coffee. They take mm -hmm. poop coffee yep. and make coffee. Yes, and it's very expensive. Oh, can do you have a price? I looked on Amazon <laughs> earlier and the cheapest one I saw was a pound for $60. Yeah, nope. <clears throat> I ain't eating. I ain't eating porcupine poop for sixty dollars. All right, <laughs> like or whatever yeah, the hell that is. How about that, that shit, dude? How about that shit? <laughs> how about that shit? Oh man. All right, listen. That was that was. Oh man, dude, you you come up with these, and I'm just like, I just did you know? <laughs> I did not know. But so here is what we're gonna do. I had mentioned earlier that we're gonna play a game. And so I heard from somewhere, um, oh, so Super Mario Party for the Switch just released an update after three years or whatever about online play. You heard about that, right? Yeah. I believe I, believe I got that information from you. And yes. <laughs> so it got me thinking because I watched a video of somebody talking about it and he had said that with that being, you know, the case – Soup, you would think Super Mario Party's prices, you know, or or um all time price or all time on the Switch list is going to go up because people are going to start buying it because it now will be worth their time because people can play right. online. And then I thought, um, you know, like a did you know? And I was going to just read the top ten Switch games of all time and say, hey, did you know the top ten Switch games of all time? And then I thought, well, that's boring. Okay, so what I was thinking was we play a game. And the game is going to consist of, Jay is going to ask me, what do you think? He has a list of the top 10 Switch sales for video games as of February 2021. And what we're going to do is, so it's give or take a couple of months, but who cares? It doesn't matter. We're not worried about the couple of months. So th these are the top 10 selling games. I made a list. So Jay is going to ask me for a number. I'm going to give him, we're going to start with number 10. And we're going to go back. This is a list-heavy episode. 
So <laughs> I hope you, hope you guys are enjoying yourself. So, um, all right, we'll start with number 10. I'll read it, and then you take it away. So number 10, I think, is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Ooh, that would be no. <laughs> number 10 <laughs> is actually New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. All right, I didn't even have that on my list anywhere. <laughs> yeah, some of these surprised me. <clears throat> All right. So number nine, I think, is Zelda... Link's Awakening. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And that would be another no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine is Splatoon 2. Oh, wow. I had Splatoon 2 at uh, number four. Woof. All right. Number eight, <laughs> Let's Go Pikachu. Or Let's Go Eevee. Either or. Nailed it. Oh, I got one right. Ding, ding, <laughs> you ding, ding, actually ding. got that one. I guarantee you that's probably the only one you'll get right. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe. Number seven, Pokemon Sword and Shield. That's a no. Damn it. <laughs> it's actually Super Mario Party, which surprised me because this is before that update came out. I have Super Mario Party at five. Oh, crap. Number six, <laughs> Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. <laughs> and that's a no. Oh, jeez. Crap. <laughs> Killing it. Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, I didn't even have that on my list. Oh, Are you serious? I forgot about that game. You fucked All right, up, so number, dude. <laughs> number five is wrong. Super Mario Party. So what's number five? Number five is Pokemon Sword and Shield. Okay, I had that at seven. Uh, number four, I had Splatoon 2, so that's wrong. Yep, that is uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I had that at number three. Jesus, that's wrong. <laughs> Crap. Okay, what's number three? <laughs> Number three is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I had that at number one. What the hell? <laughs> okay. Uh, so number two is Animal Crossing. <laughs> All right, you got that one. <laughs> Let's so what's get that, it. Two? So wait, wait, wait. Uh, the hell is number one? Hold on. I um, mm, that's. How is it not Smash Brothers or Animal Crossing? The hell? All right. And the number one Nintendo Switch game sales as of February 2021 is, Jay? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Oh, wow. Crap. I had that at six. Jeez. <laughs> Can I say something about so, Mario Kart 8? You got two out of ten. Two out of ten. That's not bad. <laughs> I had <laughs> besides besides Zelda: Link's Awakening and Fire Emblem Three Houses. Every single other title on here I had was on the list. It's just in the wrong order. Just the wrong order. <laughs> just the wrong order. Can I mention? So Mario Kart Eight Deluxe is interesting to me, right? Because it is a good game. I own it, and I've played a lot of time on it on YouTube. The problem I had with Mario Kart Eight Deluxe is it's so outdated. Like, the fact that it's up there, at least Smash Brothers keeps coming out with new characters. Animal Crossing keeps coming out with, you know, new updates, new features. Uh, they keep doing, you know, like, like holidays and stuff like that. But Mario Kart 8 Deluxe hasn't had an update in four years. It's no, like, and, and there's... Say what? And it's just a remaster of Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U. Yeah. So it's not even a new game, really. No, and it's number one. And that's like, that is actually really shocking to me because... Yes, it's a fun game, but they have potential to make updates where where you can do like a Smash Up Brothers style update where every couple of months you release a new set of tracks. Like you release a ticket that has four new tracks and you have games that you could put tracks in. You could do a new Animal Crossing track. You can do an Odyssey track. You can do a Smash Brothers theme track. It's like, but they just choose not to because... It's Nintendo. They suck. They don't Why give Why would they? They're making this much money on a game they already made before. Do you have numbers in front of you? I have uh I have numbers of copies sold. Can you what's the what's the uh what's the difference between Animal Crossing and Smash or Smash Ultimate? What's the difference between Mario Kart and Animal Crossing? I'm curious how close Animal Crossing is. Uh Mario Kart is thirty three point forty one million. Wow. And Animal Crossing is thirty-one point eighteen million. Animal Crossing could pass. So it's 
Yeah, it's only two million away. Where's uh, where's Smash Brothers? Because I thought for sure that was number one. It is not even close. It's twenty two point eighty five million. Oh wow! Animal Crossing and Mario Kart just running away with it. Yeah literally driving away dude animal crossing could not have come out at a better time than it did last year right before everything closed dude i i kid you not i got animal crossing that friday i believe and yeah that monday two days later the gamestop was closed because i was trying to go i drove by it because i wanted to ask them if they were getting resident evil 3 in because resident evil 3 was coming out that either Thursday or Friday and on the sign it was like yep stores closed <clears throat> oh yeah I remember that whatever happened with that um with what Resident Evil 3 they lost yeah so for those who don't know before the pandemic I had Resident Evil 3 remake pre-ordered paid off and I had Final Fantasy 7 remake paid off so what happened with that is when everything start well so I kept passing by around the time when the, you know, the pandemic was, was in full effect. This might even been before we were wearing masks and we were just kind of like, you know, like stay in your home as much as possible. And I would drive by every day after work. I never lost my job. So I kept working. So I would drive by the GameStop on the way home and I would just kind of walk up and, you know, closed, closed, closed. And then they were open one day and they were like, yeah, we're waiting for, um, we're waiting for, our uh the fedex guy to deliver the 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 whatever because you know at this time everybody's stuck in their home people were ap- apocalypsing everything and people were you know ordering stuff online so like the fedex truck never delivered the games and so i'm like okay well i got these pre-orders i said i was like all right i was like here here's my number call me when final fantasy or resident evil comes in so a month goes by and I go to that GameStop. They got a notice of foreclosure on the window because they ref- GameStop refused to close during the pandemic because they were trying to tell people, like they were trying to tell that uh, people that GameStop was an essential business. And so they they told the you know the the states were like, no, you have to close your business. Like you have to close until we tell you, you can reopen. And GameStop's like, no, we're essential. So they stayed open. So they got a like. They got a like this, this more or less the paper said this store is closed until further notice. So then um, I want to say half a year went by and I went back and they were like, I was like, so did you ever get my pre-orders in? And they're like, oh, no, we uh, we nev- we lost them. So I got store I got store credit and I used the store credit to buy those two games. Huh. At full price. At least you got your money back. Yeah, I basically got the games that I was going to get. I just got them six months later than <laughs> I should have, you know, because I still got I bought the games and played them. I just I just, you know, I just had to wait for them. Yeah, it, yeah it was really annoying. And of course, GameStop would be that stupid company. Hey, GameStop gets two freaking shout outs in one video. The sponsor. Right sponsor <laughs> GameStop. And neither one was good <laughs> yeah no i mean no they weren't good but listen gamestop between you and me hey this is everyone else if you don't work for gamestop or a gamestop corporate listening don't listen right now cover your ears gamestop listen i'm talking to you one-on-one i need you to do me a favor i will publicly you know i'm not i'm not a big youtuber and i'm not a big podcaster but but i got some reach we got like we got like thirteen we got like thirteen listeners. One of them's from New Zealand, bro. We got reach, dude. We're in the United States and New we Zealand. Do. We got reach. All right. You want your GameStop to prosper? Sponsor me and Jay, and I will give you all the good publicity that uh you know you you you'll ever want in your life. All right. Well, everyone else, you can cover your ears up. All right. And we'll we'll be back after um well after uh nothing because we're besides anchor sponsoring us we're not really sponsored by anything hey thank you again anchor by the way for uh sponsoring this podcast well that was interesting all right everyone so here we go the question of the week so last week i mentioned at the end of the podcast because i forgot that our list was going to be this week a top five fast food fry list so um Jay, you can start us off 
and um i guess just run th- yeah just run through your list and uh, run through my list all right yeah just run through your list number five jay <clears throat> so at number five i have five guys Ooh, i forgot about them they're actually no even... that didn't come to me immediately they're actually not but even... i like googled fast food and i'm like oh five guys yeah i love five guys fries it reminds me of boardwalk fries Ooh, those so are all salty. Good. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Number four, Jay. Number four, I have DQ Grill and Chill. Ooh. Chili cheese fries specifically. Wow, this dude is all right. <laughs> Number three, Jay. Number three, Chick Fil A waffle fries. All right. Number two, Jay. Number two, Arby's curly fries. Ooh. I like this list. And number one, fast food fry, Jay. Number one, I feel like you're going to disagree with. It's McDonald's. McDonald's fast food fries. All right. All right, here we go. The list you've all been waiting for. Jiffy's top five fast food fries that may or may not piss Jay off. Number five, Jiffy. Arby's fries. Number four, Jiffy. Five guys. I just that. Number three, Jiffy. <laughs> we actually had the same one at number three. Chick fil A fries. We're skipping number two for the time being. Number one, <laughs> Wendy's fries. Wendy's fries. They're like, dude, the problem I will say about Wendy's fries is sometimes you get them and they're really salty. But sometimes you also get them, and they're like they're like they're like soggy and they're bad. But when you get them really salty, also the the bacon fries that they have and the jalapeno something fries that they can they offer occasionally, mm, they're the bomb. Now I left number two go because <laughs> my number two is either a couple of choices, right? So my mm-hmm. number two could be McDonald's, could be Burger King. It depends, right? <clears throat> so, are you ready for my number two fast food fry? I'm, I of am all, ready for your number two. Of all time? Jiffy's number two fast food fry of all time, Burger King! Now wait, before you get pissed off, Burger King's old fries. I thought for sure you were going to yell, so I beat you to it. Burger King's old fries. Have you ever had Burger King's old fries, dude? I have had every single version of Burger King's fries since I've been alive, and they've all been trash. (laughs) There has not been a single good fry. I tweeted back, I think it was 2017, I tweeted at Burger King and asked if they're ever going to make good fries because I was (laughs) 31 at that point. I was like, I'm 31 years old, and no version of your fries has ever been good. You don't like the the versions they have now, real thick cut, nice nice meaty no, I don't, fry. I don't no, I don't like any of them. <laughs> They're not good at all. I only put that's this like on. the main reason I don't go to Burger King. I like the rest of their stuff, but I like, kill it for me. I'd like I to make a like I'd like it. to make an honorable mention. I'd like mm-hmm. to uh, I'd like to honor. That's probably better than Burger King. I, I I'd like to honorably mention. Uh, hold on, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I'm looking through something real quick. Um, where did it go? Aha, there it is. All right, hold on, hold on. I want to make an honorable mention because I. Oh no, wait, that wasn't it. What the heck? I lost my honorable mentions list. Now, nah, well, it doesn't matter. All right, it doesn't matter. I'd like to honorably mention a um a fry that I may or may not have left off my list. Um. You may have noticed that there's a fry on your list that I left off my list. I may or may not have left that off my list on purpose, but honorable mention, I would like to honorably mention the one of the fries that could be the greatest fry of all time, but mm, not great enough to make the top five. Taco Bell fries! Better than Burger King fries. Also honorable mention, KFC fries. I'll let also you guys better than Burger King. I'll let <laughs> I'll let you guys figure out uh, what fry Jiffy is missing. Mi- mi- missing? Missing. Missing. Jiffy is missing a fry, and I will tell you why. <laughs> well, that was interesting. And finally today, 
Jiffy's rant. So this rant is um, only surfacing because of, I would like to say, recent uh, transactions. Not by me. Excuse me, by the way. That was really weird. I should probably pay a fine for burping into the mic. Um, <laughs> uh, I owe $5. All right. So I recently, or not recently, I have been in the market for a PlayStation 5. Now, you can't buy PlayStation 5s anywhere because of scalpers. So before I go off on scalpers and people who buy from scalpers, I want to explain my situation so that we're all on the same page and we can all come together, kumbaya, and grab pitchforks and, you know, and light fires and burn things to the ground. Before we get to all of that, I wanted a PS5 for around now because in five days... Resident Evil Village comes out and I don't I'm not here to argue if you like Resident Evil if you think Resident Evil sucks if you if you wish they'd go back to the old school I don't care about that I wanted Resident Evil 5 Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart comes out in June Final Fantasy 7 DLC Integrade I believe it's called comes out in June as well so I have a job where I can accumulate cash and the cash that I can accumulate I don't I keep so I was putting it in a shoebox and I was saving it up so that I could have enough money and I still don't have enough money but I figured I could have enough money by June July and then you know all is well I started this plan in like I want to say January and I was like well by June July we're gonna have plenty of stock of PS5s of course we're gonna be out of the pandemic life is gonna be good I'm going to have a PS5. I'll, I'll probably buy like um I'll probably buy the I'll have to buy the DLC for Final Fantasy 7, but I get a free upgrade to the PS5 from the PS4. I'll buy Resident Evil Village and Rift Apart, Ratchet and Clank, and everything will be great. But but you know what happened, Jay? You, or do you know what's what happened? Do you know what's happening, Jay? I do know what's happening. Oh well, yeah, let's tell everyone else. Yeah, let's tell. So, so, so scalpers are happening now. I would like to preference. I watched a video before we started recording, and the guy made a great point. And I'm gonna make that point before I explode on these people. If these scalpers were like, let's say you and me were going store to store, or we were ordering online personally to resell, I'd be cool with that. I'd be cool if. If, if I was on walmart.com and you were on tarjay.com and we were like, all right, I got, I was able to, to, you know, purchase one. You were able to purchase one and then we resell them. Cool. I'm all right with that. That's fine. What I'm not okay with is scalpers. Scalpers are using bots. They're using technology that they create so that when Walmarts across the country get 4,000 PS5s, those bots buy those 4,000 PS5s and nobody gets a PS5 for $4,000. So we have been in this pandemic for a long ass time. The PS5 was released in November, October. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. November. Let's just say November. That probably sounds about right. And it has yeah, now it feels been. feels like it hasn't even been released yet. <laughs> yeah, for real. It's been seven months. And this isn't just, this isn't just the 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 it's the xbox too and now i'm not interested in getting into the xbox i don't want the xbox i don't care about the xbox never have never will i've never touched an xbox controller that's a conversation for another day but let me tell you about these pieces of shit scalpers okay and scalpers if you're listening you're a piece of trash okay they're buying these ps5s for 500 dollars and reselling them for a thousand plus are you kidding me? And there are people buying them. Are you, what? I will kick you in the nuts or I will kick you in 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 the girl parts. I don't care. I will kick you as hard as I can. Ah, well, no, I wouldn't hit a woman. That's, let's go backwards. I will kick you in the nuts though, <laughs> as hard as I can. If, I, if you tell me, oh yeah, Jiffy, I got a PS5. I paid $1,200 for it. I will kick you in the nuts. And if you tell me over the internet, I will kick you through my phone. What what in your right mind would you would you think? And like to scalpers, I just saw a video. It was an older video. 
and it was the video I was watching before we started we started recording and scalpers were telling people that they're like Robin Hood. No you're not. Robin Hood steals from the rich and gives to the poor. You're stealing from the rich and then trying to become the rich to give to the poor. Like what and what dumbass in their right mind? We just went through a pandemic. If I actually I want to ask you a question, Jay. Because I think I'm, I think I've kind of made a point, but I'm kind of not gone anywhere on this subject. I know you, and I know Gabby, right? Okay. For mm-hmm. those who don't know, Gabby and Jason, they're they're engaged. They're gonna get married. It's gonna be real nice, real real romantic. Um, it's it's gonna be great. That's besides the point. But let me say, let's let's say you wanted a PS5, Jay, and you went online and bought a PS5 for twelve hundred dollars. How uh, how exactly would that play out with uh, with Gabby? Just curious. Um, I might not have a life anymore. <laughs> yeah, like I, she would I, murder me, especially now. Yeah, yeah, you guys are getting married. Um, I think Tori would. My wife would kill me. Yep, or she'd make me sell it back. She would make me get rid of it, get my money back. Like, if you can't wait, like for I know I get it. You want a PlayStation Five? Boo hoo! Here's the problem though. Uh, until now, five days from now, there is nothing the PlayStation 5 offers that I want. I don't want any day. I want Spider-Man, Miles Morales, but not enough to buy a $800 PS5. And even Ratchet and & Clank and Resident Evil Village coming out and the Final Fantasy DLC is still not a $900 system. No. Listen, people, I want to make this very clear. Scalpers, you're assholes. And people who buy from scalpers, you're also an asshole. And... I can't kick all of you in the nuts. So if you could just do me a favor, kick yourself in the nuts. All right. As hard as you can. Um, (laughs) If you're a girl, punch yourself in the face. Like that's the best I can offer to you. I don't resort to violence, but Jesus Christ, man. Like you're killing me here. Like this is so dumb. You, what do you, what is like these, these, I just can't. And I thought I would be even more enraged than scalp at scalping than i am but i'm just i'm frustrated and it's like not a big deal i don't need a ps5 but i want one and now these games are gonna come out and i won't be able to get them because because asshole scalpers are selling them on ebay for twelve hundred dollars and i just i don't know you got what um you you got anything on scalpers scalpers suck yeah (laughs) and not just the ps5 when it comes to anything yeah. Anything. There's there's a ton of things that Disney comes out with. Yeah. Like I'm a huge Disney fan. I don't know if we've went over that. Probably could so. get the idea from the first couple episodes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um so all the time I see like park exclusive things come out or things that are limited that come out. And if you're not online the second they come out, you're screwed. Because all the scalpers will buy them. And sell them for double, triple, quadruple the amount of money. And I refuse to pay for that. So there's a lot of things that I just haven't gotten because yeah, because scalpers. And then, oh, I and know. it sucks. Oh, I know. I know what people are going to say. Oh, well, Jiffy. Oh, well, Jiffy. Oh, it's capitalism. No, it's not freaking capitalism. It's It's basically robbing morons is what it's doing. Because if you're going to buy a PS5 or an Xbox... At not at more than market value, unless you're getting um um a video game with that or an extra controller or something like that, you're you're an idiot. You're a straight idiot, and you should know that you're an idiot. And and instead of kicking yourself in the nuts because I know you can't do that, you should look in the mirror and say, "I'm an idiot," because you are. You're just throwing your money away, and you're you're yep, giving and you're and you're enabling the scalpers that way. Yeah. If people stopped buying the things the scalpers are selling they would have to lower their prices and probably eventually sell close to close to market value price yeah, yeah. And, and then they and then they realize oh there is no market for the ps5 and guess what your target and your walmart and all these places that have them gamestop you you might be able to get a system but until then listen people out there you're holding strong if you haven't get one and you really want one just be patient there there will be a time where um where there will be a time where the 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 system will release and you'll be able to get one no problem you just got to give it time um we're in a pandemic yep. and on a side note besides scalpers being scumbags 
even if there were no scalpers, I think that we would still have trouble getting these types of things because with the recent oh, pandemic and in an older episode, you guys heard us talked about the superconductors, I believe they were called or whatever the chips that are in them. These chips are yep. also in switches and Xboxes and phones and cars. And it's like, so even if there were no scalpers, we'd still have trouble. Just be patient. Don't give in, save your money, buy something else. Listen, right now we're in a hard time and times are tough and you just have to be, strong and just be patient patience is a virtue first off these systems i haven't even gotten into this like on a softer side of jiffy's rant these systems aren't ready to be released they should have been released the end of this year because then you would have had more time to build stock you'd have more time to flesh these out but like there's just so they have, they're having glitch problems and they're having this problem and it's just it's a lot but at the end of the day Listen, just don't buy from these scalpers. Don't give in to yep. these people. A PlayStation 5 system is expensive at $500. It's definitely not worth it. It's probably not even worth $500, but No, not at not at all. No, but if you have to buy it at 500, buy it at 500. Don't buy it at 1000. What are you doing? And then to these scalpers, no, "Oh yeah, we're we're Robin Hood. You ain't Robin Hood, stupid. Go read a book." No. Go read a no, book. And if you buy if you buy from one of these people, you're as shitty as they are. Yeah. Go read a book. Go read Robin Hood, scalpers, and then come tell me about what Robin Hood did. Robin Hood steal Tom, we're Robin Hood, Jiffy. No, you're not. You're stealing from the rich, Sony, and not even stealing. You're buying from Sony, making Sony rich, and then you are are basically scalpers, you're who Robin Hood steals from. In case you are wondering. <laughs> Robin Hood would steal those PlayStation 5s from you. I just want to, before we get into this closing stuff, I just, I have a message to scalpers. Here's what you do, scalpers. You want to be Robin Hood? Listen closely. Here's another one, guys. Guys, if you're not scalpers, close your ears. I just want to talk to the scalpers right now. Listen, scalpers, if you want to be Robin Hood, buy those PlayStation 5s for $500, resell them for $300. Because then... You're stealing from Sony and giving back to the people. Just a thought. All right, everybody can listen. Um, with that being said, uh, you guys made it to the end, and we appreciate you. Listen, please uh, rate, review, and uh, give us five stars. By the way, Jay, do you know that we have been saying this podcast wrong the whole time? Just wanted to throw this out here. Did you know that? I'll, well, I'll, no, I, I didn't. So, so apparently, you can't say rate, review, subscribe anymore because if you say subscribe, people think that you have to pay. So, I want to explain to people: you can hit that subscribe button, but you don't have to pay a dime. So, going forward, rate, review, give us five stars. We'd greatly appreciate that. Go check out Jiffy Pop on Jiffy Pop TV. He's uh he's doing a bunch of different games. He's actually gonna start uh he tells me he's gonna start a new game that he found on Steam. Should be pretty interesting. Jay knows about it. I don't know if he remembers, but that's okay. Um I remember. Yeah. <laughs> he's also uh <laughs> working on Pokemon and uh Little Nightmares 2 is gonna be coming out very shortly. Go check him out. Oh, speaking of checking out, uh Not So Pro. You should go check out Jay on Not So Pro YouTube channel. He is continuing his wonderful adventure at Super Mario. 64 modded um yes and, and uh we're getting kind of close to the end yes and i'll tell you what the most entertaining thing is jay trying to read text backwards <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest thing in the world but with that being said thank you guys for tuning in i'm jiffy and i'll see you guys in a jeff see ya bye Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please rate, review, and give five stars. And uh, until we meet again, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you and have a good one.